FATA is a so-called two-stage missile, which means it has two engines stacked on each other. The first stage is jettisoned after its fuel is depleted to reduce the weight and maximize efficiency. FATA uses solid fuel in both stages, using solid fuels in missiles, generally reduces the preparation time before launch, so there is less time for the enemy to target launch sites, or to move its assets out of harm's way, and it also increases the rate of fire for Iranian forces. Solid fuel is also safer when it comes to transporting missiles and stockpiling them. Liquid fuel missiles can be stored for a few days, while solid fuel missiles can be stockpiled for two to three decades, with minimal maintenance. FATA has an official range of 1,400 kilometers. The second stage engine kicks off when the warhead is 400-300 kilometers away from its target. The second engine not only helps the FATA's warhead to perform evasive maneuvers, but it also accelerates its speed. Iranian engineers have successfully developed a more compact second engine for the FATA missile, effectively integrating it into the warhead. This advancement brings several benefits, including easier transportation and storage of the missile. Furthermore, it significantly reduces the radar signature of the missile, resulting in delayed detection by enemy radar systems. The second stage uses thrust vectoring technology. It basically allows FATA to change the direction of its engine thrust, making it more maneuverable both in the atmosphere and in outer space. Remember, in outer space, there is no air, so conventional methods of flight control, such as steering fins, won't work up there. So having this thrust vectoring technology is essential for FATA to perform evasive maneuvers in mid-course, and to dodge enemy exo-atmospheric anti-missile systems, such as the Zionist regime's Aero 4 system, which is currently under development and funded by American taxpayers. Based on the latest reports, the Iranian Ministry of Defense is currently in contact with over 6,500 manufacturing companies, approximately 1,400 of which are technology startups run by young Iranian boys and girls. In addition to the thrust vectoring technology that I mentioned earlier, the FATA's warhead is also equipped with fins to help it maneuver better in the final stage. The fins are relatively small and supported by ramps to protect them against high temperatures at high velocities. Small fins indicate that the Iranian engineers have prioritized higher speed and lower radar signature over a longer range. Moreover, the warhead's nose has been extended to reduce drag and radar signature, allowing it to go faster and not be detected easily. We know very little about FATA's guidance system, but this is the actual masterpiece in my opinion, a crucial element when it comes to building a hypersonic missile. Performing evasive maneuvers at such high speeds, puts enormous structural pressure on the warhead. Radio frequencies are disrupted at hypersonic speeds, so it becomes very challenging to use conventional navigational methods, such as radar or satellite to find the target. The guidance system must constantly change the direction of the warhead to evade the enemy, and yet make it land on the target with pinpoint accuracy. Hypersonic missiles like the FATA typically follow a depressed trajectory, which means they fly at lower altitudes, and for an extended duration during the mid-course phase, compared to their predecessors. This approach enables them to remain hidden from enemy detection for a longer period. However, this trajectory exposes them to intense pressure, necessitating the use of advanced alloys in their construction. These sophisticated materials are essential for the missiles to withstand the tremendous heat and forces experienced during extended flight at such low altitudes and high speeds.